for you this month that Miss Monica is going to tell you all about, but we have an activity before we start the story. Huh? This month we're going to be learning about a guy named Samuel and how he got to hear someone talking to him in the middle of the night. So we have a game to play that we have to use our hearing. So we have this little guy, Elmo, Elmo. yeah, and Elmo has a little switch, huh? How about I hide them and then you're gonna listen. Does that sound good? Yep. Okay, so you stay sitting in the chair and then I'm gonna hide them and I'll tell you when I'm ready. We're ready. Okay, say, all right, Elmo, you go hide. Okay, don't peek. I better not peek. Okay, close your eyes. For me? Yep. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna close my eyes. I won't peek. You hide them. Oh, Can I look? Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna listen for him. Oh man. So we're happy. He's happy. Out of here. <gasps> Let's show the kids what they can do if they don't have a talking Elmo. Here, should we turn him off? So if you guys don't have a talking Elmo, here's another way you can play the game. If you have a kitchen timer, maybe they have a timer, or we use this for lots of things, huh? But then you could listen for the ticking and you could hide it. So that's another idea. I hope you have fun with this activity and keep watching because Miss Monica has some good stories. Bye guys. Bye. Hi kiddos. Welcome back. I hope you are all doing great. I bet most of you are done or almost done with school. Woohoo! Yay for summer. We've been learning so many things as we continue our journey through the Bible this month. So today we're going to catch you up. Who remembers how many books there are in the Bible? 66. So far we've made our way through the first seven books. <clears throat> and today we begin the book of Samuel. Today's story start, starts long, long ago, far, far away. There was a woman named Hannah. Hannah was married to Elkanah, and they loved each other very much. But Hannah was very sad because she could not have children. Every year they would make the long journey to Shiloh to worship God and offer sacrifices. And every year Hannah would cry out to God for a child. One year she was especially sad and promised God that if he gave her a son, she would give him back to God to be raised by the priest to serve God all his life. As she was weeping before God, the priest, Eli, saw her and thought something was wrong with her. She explained that she was just crying out to God. So Eli blessed her and prayed God would grant her request. Sure enough, by the next year when it was time to go back to worship and offer sacrifices, Hannah had had a son and named him Samuel. She stayed home with Samuel for several years. Then when he was about four or five, that's pretty little, she returned to the temple in Shiloh and presented Samuel to Eli. Would you teach him how to serve God? She asked him. Eli took Samuel and showed him how to serve in the temple and he grew in body and spirit. 
One night when he was about 10, Samuel was sound asleep and he heard Eli calling, Samuel, Samuel. So he jumped up and ran into Eli's room and said, here I am, did you call me? Eli was sound asleep and woke up with a start. You must have been dreaming. I didn't call you, go back to bed. So Samuel went back to bed, and as he was drifting off to sleep, again he heard, Samuel, Samuel. Well, he jumped up and ran into Eli's room. You called me, here I am. Eli was a little annoyed this time. Go back to bed, Samuel, I did not call you. So Samuel did, but once again he heard, Samuel, Samuel. When he ran into Eli's room this time, Eli sat up and said, Samuel, it must be God calling you. Next time he calls your name, say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Sure enough, God called to Samuel again, and this time Samuel responded. God talked to Samuel that night, and he continued to talk to him night after night, day after day. As Samuel grew up, the people saw him as God's prophet. God spoke through Samuel to the people. I love this story about Samuel. It shows us that God doesn't wait for you to grow up to talk to you. Do you know that God wants to talk to you? We call talking to God praying. Praying is just sharing what's on your heart or your mind with God. You can pray out loud. You can pray silently. You can pray anywhere. You can pray with your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister. You can pray by yourself. The important thing is that you keep talking to him like you would talk to a friend and then be like Samuel and listen. God speaks to us in so many ways. You might not hear a voice like Samuel did, but you could. God speaks to us through the Bible. He can speak to us through other people. He speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. Have you ever just had a thought or a feeling that you knew was God speaking to you? I'm praying that you would know God is speaking to you. Take time to listen. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. God is after your whole heart. Samuel served God with all his heart. He was his prophet to the people of Israel. Do you remember when we learned about Deborah and Gideon? They were called judges. There were a total of 12 judges. The people would listen to the judge for a while, but then eventually they would start to do whatever they wanted. And then they would get captured by the bad guys. They would cry out to God for help. God would hear their cries and raise up a judge to free the people and lead them. The Israelites would follow this judge for a while, but soon they'd forget about God, go off on their own, do their own thing. This happened over and over and over. After many years, when Samuel was an older man, the people started to grumble and they came to Samuel and complained, Samuel, all the nations around us have a king. We want a king. Samuel was upset. Guys, you already have a king. You have the king of kings. But the people wanted a king that they could see. They wanted someone who they could put a crown on their head. Psalm 47, 7 says, For God is the king of all the earth. Sing to him a song of praise. The people were rejecting the king of the earth. So God gave the people what they wanted. He chose a very tall, very handsome man named Saul. He looked like a great king, but Saul didn't feel like a great king. When Samuel first saw Saul, he was looking for some lost donkeys. Samuel and Saul weren't sure God was right, but God gave them some really cool signs to show that, yes, indeed, Saul was God's choice to be Israel's first king. When it came time for Samuel to present Saul to the people to crown him king, Saul was nowhere to be found. His hiding spot was so good, no one could find him. Samuel had to ask God, have you seen Saul? Where is he? God said, yes, he's hiding among the supplies. And sure enough, they found Saul 
in the bags and boxes. They brought him out and made him king before all of Israel. Even kings are afraid sometimes. It can be scary and hard to do something new. Grown-ups feel that way too. But if we let our fear hold us back from trying, if we stay hiding, then we will miss out on the amazing things God has for us. God promises us that we will never be alone in our adventures. He goes before us and he is with us. Saul had many adventures with God. And before we talk about the next one, I want to take you into my kitchen. Who likes to bake? I do. I just made some chocolate chip cookies. Very yummy. I always follow the recipe so that they turn out just right. When you're cooking things on the stove, like chili or soup or something, you can add whatever you want. You can change up the recipe. You can taste it and decide what spices you want to put in or change some ingredients. But when you're baking, you need to follow the recipe. Baking is a science. It involves precise measurements of ingredients. A lot of cake recipes call for baking soda. If you put too much in, it can really mess up your cake. It will rise too fast, collapse and fall. It can taste like soap. Ugh, yuck. If you don't add enough baking soda, your cake will not puff up and will be hard. When you follow the recipe and measure carefully, your cake will be sweet, fluffy, and delicious. Just like these cookies. Just like a recipe, God has a certain way of doing things. Even though Saul was the king of Israel, he was still supposed to follow the king of the universe, God. Samuel was still God's prophet, and he was God's messenger to King Saul and the people. Saul was going to war against the Philistine army. Samuel told Saul to wait seven days so that Samuel could meet up with him and offer sacrifices and prayers before they went to battle so that God could bless them. Saul waited, and as he waited, it seemed like the Philistine army was growing. It was so big, it seemed like the number of grains of sand on the beach. Saul's men started to get really nervous and they were shaking with fear. Many of them decided to get out of there and deserted their army. When Saul saw that his army was shrinking, he got really impatient with Samuel. On the seventh day, right at the crack of dawn, Samuel still wasn't there. So Saul decided to offer the sacrifices himself, a job only a prophet could do. As soon as he was finished, guess who showed up? Samuel. Saul, what have you done? Samuel gasped. Saul said, well, you weren't here right away and my men were leaving. I felt like I should just do your job. Samuel told Saul he had done a very foolish thing. Because he didn't follow God's directions completely and carefully, Saul would not see one of his sons be king. God would choose someone else to be the next king of Israel. Even when Saul heard this, he didn't ask for God's forgiveness. Saul continued to do his own thing. His actions revealed who Saul had set his heart on, not God, but himself. God would remove Saul's crown and give it to a man who had a heart for God. What can we learn from Saul's story? Haven't we all wanted to do our own thing? Doing things on our own, apart from God, never goes well. God wants to be in our life. The Bible tells us in Psalm 128 verses 1 and 2, How joyous are those who love the Lord and bow low before God, ready to obey Him. Your reward will be prosperity, happiness, and well-being. God wants good things for us. He has a good recipe for our lives. We just need to follow it. Psalm 86, 5 says, You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call on you. God knows we aren't perfect. He knows we'll make mistakes. The one who wrote these words in the Psalms was the one God chose as the next king of Israel. Like Saul, he made mistakes. He was not perfect, but his heart was set on God. And that is what God longs for, hearts that are set on him. That was a lot to learn in one video. 
I hope you are inspired by these Bible stories and the things God wants us to learn through them. It's been so fun catching up with you. I hope you have a really fabulous start to your summer, and I hope to see you at church sometime. We'll have all our classes going again. I'm going to send you back to Miss Megan and Riley as they have another fun activity for you to try at home. Bye, guys. Hey, guys. I hope you had a good time listening to all the stories we've done this month. We have one activity to show you before we go that goes with that story about King Saul. Where was King Saul hiding? He was hiding with all the luggage, huh? All the bags. Let's open this up. We got a king in here. <gasps> okay, we got a king. So we thought this could be a fun game to play. If you have a little character that could represent a king or if you had a crown or you could make a crown, you could pretend to be King Saul and hide and then someone in your family could come find you or you could hide a little character and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hide this little guy. He's gonna represent King Saul. So you guys wait here. We're gonna go hide him. Ready, Rye? I'm ready. You're ready. Let's get King Saul. Tell the kids, no peeking. No peeking. No peeking. Here we go. All right, let's get a good hiding spot. Hey. Oh, Pretend to be King Saul? I would. Can I put this crown on you? Okay. So we're gonna pretend you're King Saul. Okay guys, close your eyes, cause Riley's gonna hide. One minute. So <laughs> hold on guys. Did you guys find it? 